Good morning and welcome to Today in the Word. We're going through 1 Thessalonians. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer, and I want you to join me today in verse 9 and 10 of chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians. We've been walking through this for the last few days, and I want to point out particular verse 9 and 10. This is where I was headed from the very beginning. And chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians, Paul is writing uh, to the Thessalonians from Corinth after he and Silvanus or Silas and Timothy had been there. And the gospel had entrance, but also high resistance. And there was such a spiritual conflict that they really snuck Paul and Silas out at night and said, you guys go on. But the believers began to be strong. And it seems like when there is suffering and struggles and afflictions, the church does its best. And so we see that right here where Paul is making a response to them and saying, man, the reception that was there and the evidence that you're chosen by the Father was the way that you heard by the Holy Spirit and was convicted in your heart and you turned to God. And I want to look at verse 9 and 10, but could I back up to verse 8 here just to tie it in to our last session? For he says, For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from Macedonia and Achaia. As you know, Macedonia, that region, that area. Actually, Thessalonica at one time was the capital of Rome in the district of Macedonia. So this was a very strategic place for the gospel to go forth. And so he says, it was sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere <laughs> so that we need not say anything. Don't you love that? The evidence of the power of the gospel that transform lives has gone everywhere. Paul says, I don't even need to say anything. They just look at you. And I've watched that in some of the most difficult regions of the world where Christianity is suppressed and against the law and people put in prison and, and killed for their faith, yet the church grows faster there than anywhere else. And it's like the more that they struggle, the more the church responds. Even in trying times that we're in right now, that is the case. People are turning more to God in prayer, and I think we need to take advantage of this and pray and to share the gospel. And I think that's important as we recognize that the gospel is the power of God. Let's not forget that to all those who believe. And so here we see he make evidence of that so that we need not say anything. In other words, they just look at you. Verse 9 and 10 now. For they themselves report, talking about the people of that area, report concerning us the kind of reception that we had among you said so they are talking about paul and silas and timothy man when they were here something happened <laughs> uh, one place they even said they turned the world upside down because they saw people's lives change there's nothing like seeing the gospel change people it refreshes me when i see people become brand new in Christ. People I've known for a long time. And I gotta be honest, there's sometimes I felt like, man, I should have been praying for them. When I hear that they came to faith and their transformation of the gospel. I mean, even people I went to school with that I thought had no spiritual interest at all. Today, believe in Christ and trust him and there's evidence of the gospel in them. I love it. <laughs> it, it, it. It testifies of the goodness of, of God in us. It reminds us of it. And that's what Paul is saying. He's saying they, they reported this. And here's what they says. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how, this is where I was headed, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. How you turn to to God from idols. And I know in our modern culture, it's easy for us to say, oh, we don't have idolatry. I mean, I've been in those nations of the world 
that might be considered primitive and go into those little huts and duck down and get inside of them because sometimes the, the people were only up to about armpit in their height and so when I get inside their hut I could see easily above the doorpost and sometimes there were little whatnot idols carved out of wood placed over the door to ward away evil spirits and they would have idols sitting around and I've been in other nations that may be more developed had idols the same way and it'd be easy for us to say oh yeah we don't believe in that kind of stuff we're not idol worshipers but can I tell you, every individual from the time of the Garden of Eden and Adam's fall deals with idolatry. Idolatry, biblically, is anything that takes the place of our total trust in God. I believe right now that there are people who are turning to the living God, turning to God from idols. Now, Sports fans, don't get mad at me because you can be a great sports fan and not make sports your idol. I love golf, but that doesn't mean I make it an idol. But anything like that could be. I mean, there were probably, during March Madness, <laughs> some frustrated people. What am I going to do? Even right now, all of our sports figures and if, if the financial market is your idol, if mammon or money is your idol, I mean, it's out of control. Even if your health is your idol, you don't have any control over it. There's no cure for the coronavirus. I mean, for you to even get through it is by because you trust in God. For you to have health at all because you trust in God. When you woke up this morning and you had breath, it's because you trust in God. He holds all things together by the word of his power. I mean, all of our idols are destroyed. Whether it's the stock market or whether it's your job, whether it was your dependency upon entertainment, you can't even go to movies, you can't, I mean, Hollywood is shut down. The whole world is brought to its knees. And who would have thought? No wonder the hearts of people are saying, there's got to be more. I believe this is the church's finest hour to share the gospel. In those difficult times, it said that it was evidence could be seen by the people in the world of the gospel's effect when Paul brought that. And he said, they say it so well, I don't need to say anything. How you turn to God from your idols. And it says, and to wait for his son from heaven. Wow. There's a shift that this earth is but momentary. If you live to be 90 years old, 100 years old, your life is like a vapor. It's like grass or flowers here today and fades. We put so much emphasis on this life. When everything that you're going through, if you're a believer, it's the trying of your faith that gives God glory and praise, not only in this life, but all throughout eternity. Your confidence and faith in how he brought you forth is a testimony of his grace. When you're going through difficult times, don't be upset about that. Say, yes, Lord, this is a time for your, to work in my faith that will give you glory. You purify my faith through difficult times. Trust in him. There are no idols left. They're all destroyed. Whatever you focused on, whatever took your time, is now taken away. Our flesh itself craves after idols. We want something to fill this void in us. And God says, I want to fill everything in you. And for you to wait for the sun, meaning for you to shift over from this life to him, he says, who is our hope from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. There it is. We're get, about to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. This next week is Holy Week. It was the last week that Jesus walked on the earth. And there were people, no doubt, when he came into the city that was praising him and glorifying him because they thought he was their natural deliverer that was going to lead a revolt against Rome. There had to be people there that was praising him and but they weren't really praising him. They were doing it for themselves. 
not for him. They thought this is our deliverer and he's going to free us from Rome. If that was the case, the next week those same voices were saying, crucify him, crucify him. But those who saw him for who he was, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, those who really were honoring him, then their heart was truly there. And it was such a happy day for them to know that their Savior was raised from the dead. It says, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. He is your refuge. He is your hope. He is your strength. I love going through the scripture. We've been through chapter one. We'll pick back up next week in chapter two. Could I pray with you? Father, I thank you today that we can turn to you from all idolatry. And anyone here that's watching that's put their trust in how things are going to be, their finances, their jobs, their nation, sports figure, celebrities, <laughs> all of us have been brought down together to trust only in the Lord. Even our health, we trust you for that. Our life itself. Therefore, it's in you that we live and have our existence. And I pray for those today that are in the word, that they be strong in the word and steadfast in the scriptures as we walk through these together. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me with Today in the Word. God bless you.